want to honor uh, Stephen Darbury Ministries. And what's so important about this, the man breaks down everything, like the way that he has the ability and the gift to break down the Bible and it related to male-native individuals is, is amazing, man. It's a God's gift. Uh, he died in back in 2017. I wish I would have discovered him before then, but shout out to my friend Mike Carter. He sent me this many videos of him. I only watched like two of them. And one video that really stood out to me when he really discussed about the apartheid and the separation of the black race and the whole agenda from the, the 1985 South African president at a particular time um, when African Africans were unable to an interracial date or they weren't able to you know sleep with you know, different races of people it was more of a gentrif gentrification and Jim Crow it was really that bad and it's when Nelson Mandela be uh, came up to play and he became a he was an inspiration to to really uh, alleviate that and eliminate that man because you know as human beings we we shouldn't be subjected to just limited of things you know especially when it comes to human interaction and it was a it was a really a mass genocide for the most part, man. I mean, people was going to jail. I mean, they didn't really had no ability to um, buy wealth. It was just many things that was going on. And one specific thing he actually uh, looked up. He was saying like, you know, my whole purpose is to get rid of the black man and, and his family and to destroy them. And he was really kind of relaying that to how the Will Lynch uh, letter syndrome that was really passed on to generations from the white slave owners into us now and how they want to break up the family structure. It talks about how we originally came from in 2nd Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. Very knowledgeable about the lost books of the Bible. And dude, I, I'm just, I'm just like, you know, in awe with him, man. It's just like, man, you know, I just want to honor him for this Black History Month and, you know, just really researching about a lot of people that did so much for the country and they should be honored and and it's good you know some people want to debate that they want to get rid of the black history month because you know we always talked about the main people and martin luther king the rosa parks malcolm x but we don't really go into detail about the black Panther movement we don't go into detail about w.e.b du bois or i mean they talk about george washington carver then you got some people get mixed up of rosa parks and harriet tubman right and then you know it's the shortest month of the year then the next month comes along and then we, we study about other races of people it should be an all-year thing and, you know, I think school systems uh, should be really enforced into that. I, I just heard that they may get rid of slavery from textbooks. So, you know, you got a new generation that's coming in, might not even have no type of history unless they're not really um, getting knowledge from their parents or homeschool and they relying on the public school system. It's going to be a race. And I believe this is something in history that we cannot um, forget. But, you know, Stephen Darberry, um, for a lot of African-Americans, man, if you really want to understand your culture, because I'm still still learning, and it really gave me just a huge inspiration to, to read the Bible a lot more and understand it. I mean, he really breaks down the scriptures like a little NIV study Bible, man, and he has a modest type of um, congregation. It's really not a mega church, but his whole originally uh, identity is to reveal like okay why christ made the redemption of christ was the reason why he died on the cross and he was crucified because if you go to matthew chapter 23 i believe you know he, he kind of talks about you know he he talks about the sadducees and and the pharisees and the scribes and he he pretty much exposed what those people were those were not our people those were, they were the so-called jews of the synagogue synagogues of satan and he kind of knew what was going on it wasn't just really all the miracles that he was doing in the book of matthew like healing the sick raising the dead but it was mainly like you know this guy is uh prophesizing and he sit up here and you know not respecting us and all this type of thing since when king harry will always want to you know exterminate the babies and stuff like that i mean it was just a really uh crazy thing man and you know it really makes you want to reaffirm your faithful God, man, after listening to this man. And there's many other individuals you can compare him to, like Miles Monroe, um, rest, his, rest his soul, man, who died in a plane crash, his whole family did. And he, he was bringing out the word, the visions of man. And I, what I was just like is, you know, I'm still studying, like, okay, where did we originally came from? You know, from Nigeria, we came from different, you know, countries uh, in the continent of Africa. I mean, it's just, uh, let's talk about the motherland, all many things, man, that, that's African-Americans to kind of don't know 
about and he kind of exposed like you know some of these pastors that want not, might not talk about these type of things because they're afraid they're going to lose that flow of money and the tithes and offerings from their congregation if they really go into deep detail about this but he didn't care man and you know darby you know, ministries is continuously to grow and it's on youtube and his family is doing the best they can to provide that information for us so i you know, I advise anyone, man, who really wants to know more about the faith, and I'm still learning about it, you know, go ahead and take your time to watch him. He has over 129,000 subscribers, I believe, like like hundreds of videos, man, that you can really watch and educate yourself. They're about an hour and a half long, maybe, at most two hours. But, um, you know, just this really, just really helping me do a little more of my research, man. And it just makes you think, like, dang, back in the past, like, wow, like, if you really know where you came from and the roots of the problem and, you know, eliminate ignorance, you it, you will be in a better state of mind because we've been lied to in history for the longest, man. Um, Isaiah eleven fifty talks about Joel chapter 3. I mean, you know, when is the basis of why slavery happened? Because we know we were ancestors were disobedient to God and that was pretty much our ultimate punishment in that particular time. And God expects more from us because we was the favorite tribe of Judah. And, you know, I was just like thinking like, whoa, this is great, you know. And, of course, you know, you go back into Deuteronomy and the curses and Deuteronomy 28, and Abraham kind of prophesied it's going to be a nation that's going to come against you all and all that stuff, man, and you'll be enslaved. And, I mean, all these things was just really <sighs> just part of our, you know, part of our, I'll say demise in a way, but we still can overcome. He was providing a lot of solutions because if you go back to the commandments of God and, you know, and honor him and, and, and proclaim the gospel, the, like in Mark 16, um, playing the gospel and every thing and creature, then you shall be saved. But it was just so, so good, man. Um, this man was truly a man of God. And I just want to honor him for, you know, Black History Month and many, many uh, months ahead. <laughs> Seriously, man. But uh, this is this is good. Um, you guys continue to like, comment, subscribe. Um, put his ministry in the link in the description box. It's, I'm just going to type it in. You know, you guys can check it out. Even though, you know, those especially who are African descent, I, I highly advise you to go ahead and watch them, man. If you want to have a good general understanding and start to study the Word of God, man. Um, uh, studying the Gospels, Mark, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, th those are important. The Corinthians, first second Corinthians, written by Apostle Paul. What was the inspiration? Why they why he was doing the things that he was doing, why he decided to go to Damascus and you know, and he was blinded and, and God, you know, the Holy Spirit came upon him and he decided to preach the word. He made a huge uh three sixty turn after he was persecuting Christians. I mean, it's a reason for all these things, man, but it's it's an amazing um props to respect and to his family, continues to do what you're doing. And yeah, that's really hard to say, man. Let's just continue to work hard, man, and uh, keep keep the Lord first. And that's that's the best thing you can do right now. This your boy Eileen Jr. I'm out. Deuces.